So I really like my little rigid uh, planer, but it's a pain in the butt because it lives on the floor and every time I want to use it, I got to pick it up, set it down on the table saw table, find a place to plug it in, hook up the hose, it's a process. And I just want something that's simple and easy to use and convenient. So I decided to make one of those, you know, flip top carts that I can put this and my spindle sander on. I came up with a couple of design ideas and then I started looking on other people's ideas on YouTube and I came across Fisher's shop and uh, he had designed a cart that really has all the features I could ever hope for and he has a super clever design where you don't have to plug and unplug your devices they're always plugged in I'm like that that's what I want so uh, I went ahead and bought his plans I decided I should support him I probably could build it without buying the plans but he wants five bucks for these plans and I think it's a worthy thing to send the guy five bucks for his awesome idea I'm gonna link it in the description um, so if you want to see his video on him building the cart not to mention this guy's got you know some pretty cool sense of humor on his videos and if you're gonna build this thing you know send the guy five bucks buy his uh, plans and um, this is just a video of me putting together his idea with a couple of my own small minor changes um, I had to make it a little bit taller because this tool is taller than the tools that he put on his so I made it just two and a half inches taller so that this can fit in it but other than that, here's just a video of me putting it together. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is take our half inch plywood. It's just a quarter sheet, um, uh, it's a 2x4 sheet. And we're cutting it down to make our drawer. That's the first step we're going to do because we're going to predicate the other measurements off the final width of our drawer. Here we just cut the drawer bottom and then all the drawer sides. Next, it's on to breaking down the plywood. This entire project can be done with one sheet of three-quarter plywood and a quarter sheet of half-inch plywood. And Fisher does a nice job of uh, diagramming it out so you can break down your plywood with very little waste. After all the plywood's broken down, then it's time to uh, build that drawer. And it's a very simple design with just pocket hole screws and uh, the bottom is just glued and brad nailed. Since those pocket screws are in there at an angle, it tends to shift your parts a little bit when you tighten them up. So you got to make sure to clamp it down with something so that it won't move and make your parts be off by just a hair. So then I checked the inside of the drawer for square and it was off a little bit and uh, I fiddled with it for a while and I tried to use a method of clamping it diagonally and it just didn't want to cooperate with me. So I knew that the drawer bottom was nice and square and uh, what I did was I just clamped the frame to the drawer bottom and then tapped it into place and glued it and brad nailed it and that was the end of that. Then using the supplied measurements, I just lay out all the lines on the uh, side pieces to cut them later on the bandsaw. I wanted to cut these pieces at the exact same time and I don't have any double stick tape so I just use some pieces of you know blue tape and a little dot of CA glue and that holds them together so I can cut them and then it'll pull easily apart afterwards.
while the two side pieces are still stuck together, I use a Forstner bit to drill out the pivot hole so they'll be in perfect alignment. Since most of the equipment in my shop is gray, I really don't care for that wood look, uh, not in the shop at least. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint it all gray, but God, I hate painting. So while the paint dries, it's time to start on the flip top part, and I'm just uh, starting with some 2x4s and squaring them up, cutting them to length. And after I cut them to length, then I'll go ahead and rip them on the table saw to get rid of those rounded edges on the uh, both sides. Then again, I clamp two of those uh, two by fours together where the uh, pivot hole is, and I drill through them with the Forstner, and that makes sure that they're in good alignment as well. Now it's time to start the assembly of the flip top table. Uh, start by gluing down to the one of the surfaces both sides that have the pivot holes And I'm just doing some glue and brad nails here later. I'll put some screws in it to reinforce it pretty good Next I mark the location where the wiring is going to come through this 2x4 and I drill it with a Forstner bit. I need some notches on this 2x4 to get some more wiring through and I was too lazy to switch to the dado blade so I just cut a little groove at a time. Now on Fisher's video, he used a power strip, but I've only got two things to plug in and a power strip's like 10 or 12 bucks and a, a box and outlet and a cover is like $2. So I just went with a cheaper route and it was real easy to do. Now it's time to just drop on the sander on the one side, mark all the bolt holes and the uh, bigger hole for the power connector to go through. Now the paint's dry so it's time to assemble and uh, I'm just taking one side and screwing it into the bottom using just some shop made angle brackets. These come in really handy sometimes and they don't cost nothing to make. Now to get the proper distance for the drawer, I just set in the drawer slides with the drawer, put the other side on, and that gives you the perfect measurement of where that side should be. Now I attach the back side to the shelf, again with the uh, angle brackets, and this will make the box where the drawer goes in. I just slide in a piece of uh, six inch cutoff and that holds the whole shelf parallel in its perfect height. And I was too lazy to pocket screw it from the inside like Fisher did. I just screwed it from the outside. I don't mind a couple screws. Just 
just used a piece of cut off half inch plywood here to space her up the uh, drawer to the proper height. Had some leftover wheels, caster wheels, because I bought a Harbor Freight dust collector and I never used the wheels. I mounted it to the wall, so this was a perfect place to use these. So basically, they, they were free. Now, time to test fit the flip top onto the sides. Now, the top shelf on the flip cart has the uh, stops that keep it from rotating past the 180 degree point. I'm just marking them out here so I can cut them out on the bandsaw. And then this next image I know is going to upset the safety Nazis, but really, it's just a little three quarter inch long cut. It's okay. I wasn't about to remove the fence just for this one little cut. God, I hate lifting this thing, but I'm going to set it on there so that I can mark the bolt hole positions and then drill them out and then paint the top cover. I got a 25 foot extension cord uh, from Home Depot and now I'm just going to snip the end of it off. That's going to go through the tubing and it's going to supply power to my outlet that I have inside. I'm just adding this little block here underneath the uh, pipe. That keeps the black iron pipe from being able to rotate inside the box and twist up on the, uh, on the wiring. Next step is to bolt the top shelf to the bottom of the planer. And hopefully this will be the last time I have to lift this thing.
Now to install some little clamps on the side. These I got at Lowe's and they're really quick and easy to use. Now just to reinforce the sides of the cabinet, I'm installing some black iron pipe flanges. And this should keep the pipe from wearing on the, uh, on the plywood there. Seriously? Yeah, so I goofed up. I should have installed that um, that base plate before I ran the wiring through. Uh, then when I tried to do it afterwards, I couldn't get the cable through it. So I had to take it all back apart and uh, reinstall the, the, the base plate thing and then cut the tube and put it all back together. So I was a little upset. Yep, so I had to carry and pick this thing up two more times because of my mess up. Anyhow, enough of my goof up. Now I'm going to make a uh, drawer pull for the uh, drawer underneath. And um, I'm just making it out of it. I'm cutting a couple like triangular little pieces and I'm going to use a piece of uh, aluminum dowel to go between them as a door handle. I wanted something that looked a little, maybe a little industrial. I don't know. And it was easy. Yay, paint. Ugh. Okay, so my flip cart is done and I could not be happier with it. Um, I gotta say thank you Fisher Shop out there. This is a phenomenal idea. I couldn't have come up with anything better myself. I really like it because my tools are always plugged in. I don't have to go and look for an extension cord or any, you know, or when you want, I've seen some other flip carts that when you want to flip it over, you got to gather up your cord, put it away, all this kind of stuff. This thing is super easy. Check this out. This plug, this uh, tool is plugged in. It runs. Now I just unlatch. Flip it over. Latch it. Like I said, tools are always plugged in, ready to go, no waste of time. So I really like that. Only one place that I kind of messed up is that uh, when I looked at his website, it said the height of the tool that it would accommodate that would fit in the cabinet as it flipped over. And that height wasn't enough for this um, for this planer. I had to make it two and a half inches taller for the planer. So I took that into account, but I didn't take into account the width. And it does go in there. I mean, this thing is 24 inches wide and the cabinet's 24 inches wide. It's basically scraping as it goes through, but it does work. 
if I had it to do over again, I would make the cabinet probably a half inch wider, three quarters of an inch wider, maybe more. Uh, because this knob that goes on this planer um, sticks out just past that 24 inch mark. So I had to remove this knob. I can't leave it on there. Not that big of a deal because I don't really use it. Uh, not frequently anyway. But it, I, I would like to just be able to leave the tool the way it is. So if I had it to do over again, I'd make it a little wider. So if you're using one of these planers, definitely take that into account. But other than that, it is a phenomenal project. It's going to help me organize my shop. Thank you, Fisher. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to see something else coming from me in the future, please like or subscribe. And we'll hope to see you on the next project.